Hi guys, today we're going to be annotating a sample TOK essay for the purpose of learning about the different parts of a TOK essay, how they might be structured, um, and to revisit and clarify the essay assessment instrument. So in order to do this, the first thing you're going to need to do is download and read this sample TOK essay in English. If I click that, it will download. Um, I'm actually going to want to download it to my laptop. What you're going to be doing as you read, and I'll do this along with you so you get the idea, is to highlight in yellow anything where you see a point. I like to use the peel structure because you've learned this in English, and it works quite well for uh, TOK essays, any kind of analytical essay. You sort of make a point, or in this case, a knowledge claim. It could be a knowledge counterclaim to what you've just said, or in other words, a possible answer to the title or knowledge questions that you're asking. I recommend that each paragraph begins with a knowledge claim or a counterclaim, and that these are building off, contrasting each other. So you'll highlight those in yellow, and then you'll highlight any points of evidence or examples you could think about, same like in the presentation, your real life examples that support the claim and provide a grounding for your discussion in the real world. They, you'll also want to have a clear explanation of the relevant aspect of that example. So it's not enough to just point to it, you'll need to describe it in a little bit of depth so that we know the relevant aspects. So anywhere we see that in this sample essay, we're gonna highlight in red Next, anything, anytime we see analysis, which looks like um, any kind of insight or reflection back to the claim, understanding of how it helps to answer the knowledge question, drawing implications, telling like a bigger picture about what it means or why it matters. Um, also acknowledging any limitations of the argument, any claims that might be raised against it. These are all kinds of things that look like analysis in a TOK essay, really just saying why the example supports or proves or helps to draw um, some sort of conclusion or illuminates the point or claim that you've made. Finally, in green, you're going to highlight any links to the original title knowledge questions, or any relevant aspects that link to the knowledge framework or perhaps perspectives, any new knowledge questions, and you'll see why in a minute. The purpose of this is actually so that we can make links with the TOK essay assessment instrument and become clear about how those different aspects of the instrument might look within an essay. On this slide, you'll see how these different points, evidence, analysis, and link, how they relate to the essay rubric. So I've highlighted, I've added colors to highlight those different aspects. Um, mainly we're looking for understanding of knowledge questions and quality analysis of those knowledge questions. Breaking that down a little bit, um, we're really looking for sustained focused on the knowledge question in the title. So in the essay that we'll read, the quality of knowledge produced by an academic discipline is directly proportional to the duration of historical development of that discipline. That's really not a question, but that's the focus of the title. And if we just turn it into a question, to what extent or in what ways, that will allow us to explore that. So when we're looking at the assessment instrument, um, that sustained focus on that title is what we're looking for. And that's this screen, that link. Um, Analysis looks like developed investigation of different perspectives. Um, evidence would be linking those, that investigation effectively to areas of knowledge and ways of knowing. Arguments being clear, well, you're gonna need to make a point clear to make that happen. And you'll want to support that by real life examples, using evidence again, analyzing those, evaluating those is another way of thinking of it. And then finally, exploring why it matters and drawing implications. OK, let's get started annotating. So I've downloaded the essay, the sample essay, onto my desktop. 
I'm going to right click and open with preview on my Mac because it has a simple set of markup tools that I can use. Go ahead and open that. In order to make this really easy, I'm going to turn this into full screen. And I'm going to make this a split screen view so that I can see both my essay here and the annotated notes here on the right. Um, if you don't know how to do that, you just simply swipe up with three fingers. It shows you your different desktops. For that to work, both the two uh, windows you have to have open must be in full screen mode. And you do that by clicking on this little green button before you try to combine them. So looking at this essay, the title is about the quality of knowledge and its relationship proportional relationship to the duration of historical development of a discipline and the quality of knowledge. Let's go ahead and get started. I would say a note about the introduction here. Introductions follow a different sort of format than appeal structure. So we're going to go ahead and skip through that. Usually in the introduction, you're unpacking key terms, key concepts, drawing out any kind of knowledge issues that arise within the title. Um, when you do get a chance to read the, the introduction, that's exactly what the student does. Uh, usually the last sentence is also a thesis that sets off the direction of the title. For our purposes, we're going to look at the first paragraph and it begins. The famous quote by Albert Einstein, truth is what stands the test of experience represents the notion that the validity of a natural science discipline could be measured by the duration of time its produced knowledge remains unfalsified. Which do you think that one is? I would say right away that is definitely a claim or a point that the student is making. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my yellow highlighter and I'm going to highlight that. Next, while the notion holds certain truth, the repetition of trials certainly adds credibility to the knowledge. It does not reflect the true reality, given the examples of natural science disciplines becoming, becoming overshadowed by newly emerging ones over time. I would say that's also a claim. Because um, they're basically saying two things, sort of one, and then while that might be true, this is also true. What then causes those disciplines quality to decline with the passage of time? Hmm, that seems like a nice link to another knowledge question. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that in green. Breaking down Einstein's quote, the test of experience could refer to the testing phase in the scientific method, a process of verification through the replications of trials. I'd like to highlight that as evidence but actually, I would say at this moment, that's a very general piece of evidence. Um, I'm going to go ahead and highlight it in pink, which is kind of similar to red. Um, testing phase, phase, She's a little typo there. It's not a big deal. Um, but I'm highlighting that tentatively because it's not very specific. If this is a real life example, I'm not sure it's quite there yet. Let's see what happens. However, while knowledge can be falsified, it cannot be proved experimentally correct due to the inductive component, component of the ways of knowing, reasoning. Even the, the knowledge is repeatedly tested over decades, there is still possibility of an exception in the future. I'd say this is probably still a claim, wouldn't you guys? This part especially? Therefore, no matter how long a piece of knowledge remains unfalsified, it does not entail future reality. I think what's supposed to be happening here is analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight it in blue, even though it, I'll just put therefore. Um, I don't think it's a really good example of analysis yet, mainly because of this tentative um, example that we're looking at. It's hard to analyze an example if the example is general. Therefore, no matter how long a piece of knowledge remains unfalsified, 
blah, 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 blah. It is a sequence of newer disciplines superseding older ones, either because the central knowledge of the older discipline is experimentally falsified or because the newer ones are better representations of reality. Hmm. Might be a bit of a link back to the, the, the knowledge question. Uh, central knowledge, uh, sequence of newer disciplines, superseding older ones. Let's hope so far we've got a good example of claims, not much, um, some good linking to the title so we can see focus, but so far not a good example of evidence and analysis. Let's read on. Paragraph two. To prove the argument above, examples could be drawn from many superseded or obsolete natural science disciplines. Oh, good. One example is in the, is the discipline of classical genetics developed by Gregor Mendel since 1865. Awesome. I'm gonna get my red, well, pink highlighter ready, because here we go. With, there's our example. And with his famous experiment on test crossing, the peas and observing inherited traits like seed colors and flower color of the crossed crops, Mendel's findings developed into the discipline of classical genetics with a theory of Men Mendelian inheritance at its core. Awesome. Really nice, solid example. Okay. Oh, and it's going on. For almost nine decades, trials were repeatedly conducted and the discipline remains as a mainstream branch of genetics. That's relevant, super relevant. I wish I had like a bold highlighter, that's quite good. However, in 1944, as the DNA was discovered by scientist Oswald Avery and genetics was revolutionary combined with biochemistry, classical genetics and its observation-based experiment is gradually considered inaccurate and later entirely replaced by the new discipline of molecular genetics. Awesome. Okay. Also a nice citation there. Uh, looking at some relevant sources. Awesome. Great example. All the relevant stuff. It seems long, um, but considering that we actually didn't get into it in the last, it's probably a good thing. So actually you can see how this is an example of where an essay doesn't strictly follow that format and yet is still quite good. Next, hopefully we're getting to the analysis. This is a good example illustrating how the development of natural science. Yes, we've got analysis. It's telling me why this example is good and why it illuminates that point. Um, are driven primarily by revolutionary change rather than evolutionary changes, regardless of how long the discipline developed or remained valid, when its central knowledge could still be falsified or considered inaccurate. Yes, the possibility of falsification and paradigm shifts means that, counterintuitively, the longer a natural science discipline exists, the more vulnerable it is to emerging technologies and newer disciplines. Hmm. I feel like I'm still in analysis, but I'm also linking. So I'm going to kind of do like this. There. I mean, just to give you an idea, this feels like a link back to the original title. Uh, in fact, nothing stands the test of experiments. Experience, give if given an infinite time frame, contrary or contrasting or contradicting Einstein's quote. Mm. Okay, I think I highlighted the wrong part. The longer an scientist exists, that's it. Um, so you can see how it's done. It can be done directly. It can be done quite subtly. Um, and I'm not going to do the rest of the essay. I want you guys to have a chance to do this. Okay, so you can see uh, there's all these parts of the essay serve a purpose in relation to the assessment instrument. So at this point, now you can see, hopefully you can see clearly where these uh, highlights are relating to the aspects of the rubric. And that will help you in your own essay to think about how relevant examples, how you might use those in your analysis. After reading the essay, these are the kinds of questions the examiner will ask themselves. And I'd like you to ask yourself these same questions. Yes, no, does the essay demonstrate understanding of knowledge questions that are relevant to the prescribed title, and so on. 
Finally, what is the quality of a knowledge inquiry into the knowledge questions? Are the main points justified? Is it compelling? So on. After you get finished, I want you to record this in your Manage Back Journal and write down at least three key takeaways you've learned from doing this task. Also, upload your essay that you've annotated as a PDF file to your Manage Back Journal so that you have it for later. Awesome. Thanks, guys.